This segment is sponsored by Saga Cigars. Every new blend borrows from the past, and the Saga Blend Number no. 7 has done just that. It's the perfect combination of timeless knowledge of traditional tobaccos and newer balance that today's cigars enthusiasts come to expect and love in a fine cigar. Leveraging six generations of experience and tradition from the Reyes family, the Saga Blend Number no. 7 delivers a unique, full-flavor, medium-bodied cigar. The cigar is highlighted by a Brazilian wrapper over a blend of Central American and Dominican tobaccos. Available in three sizes at an affordable price, the Saga Blend Number no. 7 is sure to please and bring together past and present. And by Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies providing smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Paleo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to re- introduce a series of cigars that offer the same quality, construction, and detail which he perfected in Cuba. Brands include the ultra-premium Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigar Series, Azan Cigars, Naya, and Baracoa. Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigars uses a seed to humidor approach. As all tobacco is grown in their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure the progressive flavor in each cigar. Progressive flavor construction is an old Cuban technique where the cigar is designed to increase in strength as the cigar is smoked. This technique, combined with premium tobacco, provides a perfectly balanced and pleasurable smoking experience. Roberto P. Duran invites you to make their premium your standard. And by A.J. Fernandez Cigars, makers of the San Latano, one of the most talked about cigars in recent years, now offered in a groundbreaking line extension, the San Latano Bull. The San Latano Bull features an extensively aged and hearty core of Nicaraguan long fillers nestled beneath an attractive Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. Housed in a cedar sleeve, which depicts the outline of a bowl, only solidifies this cigar as a full-flavored cigar. Removing the sleeve reveals a box-pressed cigar with a beautiful, oily, and smooth chocolate brown wrapper. The San Latano Bull burns nice and neat as it issues columns of smoke, hitting you with a wall of spice, followed by leather and cedar. This densely packed cigar intensifies in deep, rich flavors and becomes a flavor bomb halfway through, only getting better with each passing draw. Strong yet smooth and perfectly balanced, A.J. Fernandez, who many have called a tobacco prodigy, has somehow pushed the already spectacular San Latano line of cigars forward with the bull. A.J. Fernandez challenges you to take on the bull, Cigar Snob's number 8 Cigar of the Year for 2014. Do we have one more? Is Age Select Select still in there, Will? Yeah. Okay. Refresh. Sorry, this is a commercial break within a commercial break. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Because this segment (coughs) is also brought to you by Age Selects, providing cigar enthusiasts with premium long filler cigars aged at least five years at an extraordinary price. The expert buyers at Age Selects go to the factories of major manufacturers and buy cigars that have been aging for years. The team at Age Selects inspects them, smokes them, and packages them up to ensure you're getting the best quality cigar to smoke. The best part is they are provided to you at an affordable price. Online, you can order at their website, CigarFrontier.com. Welcome back, everyone. Very excited about this week's Stogies of the Week. We got some, we reviewed some really, I think our reviews were very favorable of all our cigars, Will. There's a lot of very highly ranked cigars this week. It was a good, it was a good week to smoke cigars. I just thought um, sometimes you hit a week that's really, really good, and um, sometimes oh. you hit one that. Sorry, go ahead, not. Will. Sometimes you don't. Sorry, we're going to do a, a contest. You got a, we got a question from our previous interview. You got okay. a, I'm going to pick something out of the goodie bag here. I'm reaching in the box. This is the goodie bag. Okay. Well, since we... All right. So, <clears throat> since we talked about cigars that are about flavor, and this is one of my most flavorful cigars that I think I've, I've had um, uh, recently, and it's a very special release to uh, Mr. Jason Von Smoke Shop. This is the Intemperance... Um, What's it called? Their special release. I always get it wrong. 
The uh, Revenge. Intemperance Revenge. This is a five-pack of the Intemperance Revenge exclusive direct to to release to Mr. J's Havana Smoke Shop. Answer the question. Send the correct first person. Send the correct answer to the show at StogieGeeks.com. What was the name of the roller that Luge encountered in the Dominican Republic who made his first cigar? What was his name? The name of the roller that Luge encountered when he made his first cigar. Send us the answer to that question. The first correct answer to send an email to the show at StogieGeeks.com wins the five-pack of the Intemperance Revenge. How about that? Oh, that's a good one. And we'll do one more at the end, and I'll go into my little, my, my wonderfully, my prize box, which says prizes on it, which is awesome. We need to get something more debonair-ish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <coughs> Will, over to you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to kick it off this week. Um, this is a cigar that came out, of, was actually re-released a couple years ago, and I hadn't smoked it until this week. Um, La Flor Dominicana is kind of famous, I think, for a lot of what they call their collector's cigars. They kind of put these cigars out every so often. They do a batch of them. They'll do a different size. With, you know, it's, maybe it's a, an off-the-radar off off the uh, size or just an artesian size. And a couple of years ago, they brought back a cigar that they had released, I think, in 2008. It was their uh, Double Lajero in the uh, A size, uh, using the Oscuro Natural blend. It's the official name of it is the Double Lajero A Oscuro Natural Collector's Edition, if you could say all that. But it's an A size of the Double Lajero. Um, so it's a 9 by 47 It features that uh, Sumatra wrapper over Dominican binder and filler. I was going to say, for an A size, it has a pretty small ring gauge. It looks like a gigantic, almost, Corona. It, it, yeah, I mean, four, almost, I mean, 46 is Corona, so 47 is uh, roughly that same size, but it's, a no, it's nine. It's a nine-inch long. It looks like a nine-inch long Corona. It looks like a super – I was even thinking Super Churchill. Or Super Churchill, yeah. A, yeah, Churchill yeah, be 49. I think it's closer to – Right. It, it's – yeah, it's, you're <clears> right, though. You're definitely right on that. Um, now, this has been – so this was released in 2013 – and so this has actually been sitting at uh, the guys at Union Cigar actually gave me this cigar. Um, thank you for that. And um, it, it actually has been sitting in a humidor for a couple of years. So it's got a couple of years of age on it. And that was kind of the big surprise about this cigar. I figured with the smaller ring gauge and um, the fact it's double a hero, I still would get a, a very potent LFD smoke. Right. And I, and I didn't get that. This was this had mellowed very considerably to a medium strength, medium bodied cigar. Um, it had a lot of classic uh, LFD notes, a lot of woody and pepper notes. It was a nice cinnamon like sweetness um, to it. Um, it burned very good. It, it, in fact, it burned burned just about as good as I could expect. The ash was a little flaky, but nothing nothing terrible. Um, it didn't really have a lot of change ups in terms of complexity. It was a fun smoke. It was an enjoyable smoke. I think it might have passed its peak because I think it might have mellowed a little too much. And with a double hero, I like getting a little more punch with that. Um, but it's, I think if you're an LFD, one of these LFD collectors, and I, I see a lot of them online, um, it's worth getting them and having them in the humidor. It's still good enough for fiber in my book. Uh, it's, an, it's, a, it's a cigar definitely I, you know, worth checking out and see what you think. Maybe now that this, if you find them, they got a couple years of age on them. So. <laughs> they have those next door at the Havana Cigar Club, actually. Yeah, you should give one a, a, a smoke and see what you're... Because I smoked it with the guys over at my shop, and I, as I'm smoking, I'm saying, is this cigar as dialed back as I think it is? And they're saying, they were, saying, they were agreeing with me. They're saying, yeah, it's, it, this is more of a medium. So um, I wouldn't have expected that from a 47 ring gauge LFD double Lajero. Mm. Yeah. I smoked a La Aurora Corojo Churchill. Have you ever seen these before, Will? Uh, yes, I have. This is an I older have not smoked that yeah, This is an older smoked. cigar. It's got the old La, the old La Aurora band on that. It, uh, it is. I bought um, a bundle of these online uh, a long time ago, probably five years ago. So these are going to have five years of age in my humidor. Um, they were kind of, they were okay when they, when they came in and I hadn't, uh, smoked one in, in quite some time. And I said, uh, you know what, let me, let me lay one up and, and see what happens. Uh, I lit it, lit it up, you know, earlier in the day and 
it was interesting. What, like uh, a little ways into it, I, I went next door, and the La Aurora rep, uh, sales rep, was next door. Uh, and he was like, where did you get that? Because I'm like, yeah, dude, I just let him a La Aurora. It's funny you're here. He's like, where did you get that? He's like, we haven't made those in a long time. Um, so this cigar was awesome, dude. I mean, that Corojo spice has dissipated. And it's almost like with age, that spice somehow makes this magic transition into sweetness. This cigar just poured flavor and poured sweetness the entire time. It was medium bodied. It's, you know, not it's something I, I wouldn't recommend. Uh, you could probably light this up first thing uh, in the morning. Uh, th- this, again, was kind of earlier in the day when I smoked it. But what a fantastic cigar. Just unbelievable. The body, creaminess, sweetness. This cigar was awesome. And, you know, I probably got them online for four bucks a piece or something like that. Wow. Um, put them away for five years. And now, after all that, the cigar gets the Fight Chuck Norris form rating. This is a four and a half Fight Chuck Norris wow. form. That's how much I enjoyed this cigar, Will. Because it was that Corojo was just, it. they did a fantastic job. Whatever Corojo wrapper they used on this is just aged beautifully, beautifully. I believe it's a, I mean, usually they use Dominican Corojo on that. So I'd imagine, I'm not sure what yeah. type it is, but I would imagine it is. So interesting. So if you if you got in on these when they were selling cheap online five years ago, and then you know that happens. I mean, it, it's something that they've obviously discontinued. So a lot of times they'll just you get rid of their inventory, um, and you'll see shops and online closing them out. And I took advantage of that. And that's like a it's a gamble. You know, it's a roll of the dice. Sometimes you win. Sometimes it's somewhere in the middle. And sometimes it's yeah, not so great. This was a winner, dude. I was like, wow. I wish I had a lot more of these in my humidor. Excellent. And I probably have 10, and I wish I had more than that. (laughs) Good deal. Yeah. So if you can find those, definitely pick them up. Back to you, Will. Yep. Um, I smoked a pre-release of an upcoming cigar um, of of a new size of the La Historia called Regalius de Cilia. Um, so this is a line extension that's probably going to make its debut at the IPCPR of the La Historia line. And it's, here's the thing. When this was announced about a month ago, they announced they're putting a new size in the La Historia, um, which was got a lot of accolades being the number two cigar of the year in Cigar Aficionado. I think, Paul, you, you've been very high on that blend. I was a little slower. Oh, in com- I love, yeah, I love this cigar. I bought a box of them. Yeah, I mean, I was a little slower coming around, but I think, when that, when that E3 came out, I thought that was the size Cigar Aficionado got right. And I'm like, well, I see this size they're coming out with. It's a box press torpedo in a 5 and 7 ace by 58. And this and is like, a new regular release size in this blend? It's, got, it's going to be a new one yet. It okay. hasn't hit the market yet. I managed to get my hands on it. Um, now, my first reaction is like, Ernesto, what are you doing, right? A 5 and 7 ace box press torpedo, I'm like... That's cool though, uh, dude. Just, the um, yeah, the shark uh, añejo seven 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 is box press torpedo, and it's one of my my favorite añejos. Yeah, yeah. Well, what did I say? Seven, seven, seventy seventy seven, not yeah. seven seven seventy seventy seven shark, right? Yep. Don't judge a book by its cover, I should say, because this cigar. Well, wait, this what? Si- wait, what's wrong with this size, Will? I'm not a big box press torpedo guy. Really. I'm, I'm not a big bo- now. Well, you're not shark a big is, torpedo guy to begin with. I'm not a big torpedo guy to begin with, and shark is a different animal. I'm going to put that. But mm-hmm. even so, we've debated that. I mean, I know we've debated with Stogie Santa on, on the uh, on Yehos that you know I tend to not like the shark as much as some of the other sizes. Yeah, I, the shark's my favorite size. I'll stick yeah. behind that. But I think in the last year or two, I've seen some very good torpedoes come out, and especially that you know. When I was talking about the Luge cigar, was I, and I meant that that was f- fantastic. And there are some cigars that work really, really well in the Torpedo, and it seems like lately there's been some better ones. Those guys this, were in, insane, by the way. That was awesome. Way, that was a way, lot of fun. I I didn't know what to expect when we invited them on, and wow! And I and I when I got the cigars, I I pinged a few guys in the Midwest. Yeah. About the Luge, and um, these guys said no, these cigars are legit. And when I smoked them, they they were. 
and check out the interview with the folks from Lou Cigars. I think you're gonna. I really feel you're gonna be hearing a lot from these guys. They got the product. They got the personality. Mm -hmm. Um, Yep. So check that out. And I'll be talking about a Lou Cigar in in a little bit as well. Oh, good. Yep. So the um, the last story. uh, I I really really thought this was a good cigar. I thought it worked beautiful. It had that those chocolate and earth notes. It had a little bit of black and white pepper in there. I got a little bit of the black. I when I spoke to E3, I got a little touch of that black cherry note that was yes. reminiscent of the um, the uh, dark rituals, and I, I got some of that as well. <clears throat> um, I just thought it was it burned relatively. Um, it burned relatively well. It didn't burn perfect, but this was a very new pre-release sample I got. It, I wouldn't say it was a bad burn. It wasn't a perfect burn. But again, that's why uh, I don't score a pre-release. Yeah. I probably would have lost a point. But it didn't detract from the cigar experience. Um, this that 58, that 58 ring gauge in the box press, you got that tapering, so it doesn't feel like you're smoking. And the box pressing effect. It doesn't feel like you're smoking a box. You know, it just feels like you're smoking something a little more like a Parejo. Yeah. Um, I didn't rate it, but I'll say this. It would be somewhere between a box split and box worthy. Um, very, very. I think right now this and the E3, I can go either way in terms of this. It, this is definitely in the top two of the four sizes in La Historia. I think you're going to like this one, Paul. I can't wait to smoke it. And, and that dark cherry sweetness, you hit the nail on the head for me. It, it, that's uh, we what, we that's complete what, yeah. agreement there. That's the flavor yeah. that I love in this cigar. Yeah, and it's you know I think when I think this cigar got a little slow start at the gate with me because I think they needed a little more time to sit. And once they've sat, this one, this one was whatever size. I believe they've had this one sit in a while because this this is a very good size, and I think they held it back. That's just my guess because um, it it was not young at all. Mm. So I smoked uh, an Opus X uh, Reserva de Chateau. The Churchill size, I believe. I could get that wrong. I always get confused with my Opus X sizes. Someday, we'll do a segment or two on the Opus X sizes, Will. Um, there's some, been some great websites that have tried to capture all the different Opus X sizes. There's just so many, and they're not necessarily named uh, the way that represents the size. So I'm just I'm taking a guess. I think we agreed before, Will, this was the Reserva de Chateau. Yeah. Um, these were actually I got in in trade or sale from Mark Jr., uh, believe it or not. And I had, uh, I believe, bought. I think he said, I have so much vintage Opus X. He's like, I need, I, it's like, I'm not going to smoke all these. And he's like, I want to sell them to someone that's going to smoke them. I'm like, dude, I'll, I'm going to smoke all of them. And I smoked a whole bunch of them. And you've probably heard me review them on the show. And then I was rummaging through my humidor and I found these extra two, like, kicking around. And I was like, oh, I haven't smoked these. I'm like, they're 10 years old. I got to smoke them now. Like, there's no, after 10 years, man, I, you got to smoke your Opus, right? Um, sometimes they'll age a little uh, beyond that, although I smoked the original ones and they weren't, uh, they were kind of aged out. So uh, I fired one up. You can see the picture. There's a definitely, it's tough to see in the picture, but the, in, in person, not so much in the photograph, the wrapper color differences were very, very different. One was much, much lighter than the other one. Um, the flavors in the first third of this cigar are absolutely out of this world, Will. I mean, it's just awesome sweetness with that touch of leather. Absolutely perfect. Um, great cigar in the second third. Uh, you know, the, the flavors are a little dissipated, but held up. The final third is actually a little bit of an ass kicker. I got a little boozy. I didn't eat as much as I should have during that day. It was probably one of my days where I started my day with a shake and, and ate a light lunch. Not a day you want to light up even a 10-year-old Opus X. <laughs> I was a little woozy when I got home. I had to drink some soda to recuperate from that. Um, still a very good cigar. I would call this size probably a box split with a friend. Um, this larger size certainly isn't my favorite. Um, but the flavors in the first third are probably worth uh, you know keeping half a box or so, kicking around and putting some age on them. And I got Excellent. the other one I'm going to send to you, Will. Oh, wow. I appreciate that. Yeah, because I, I, I smoked a bunch of these already. So it's kind of a nice treat. You never know what you're going to find digging through a humidor. <laughs> oh, definitely not. Back to you. 
Um, so I'll, I'll talk about that Luge uh, cigar. And um, yeah. I know, I'm not going to go into a lot of background because we just had uh, the Luge guys on. But you can check out, if you missed that video, we'll have it posted. It's it's uh, one of his, um, I want to say core lines, but nothing's regular production because everything's pretty much a small batch. It's called the Luge Morpheus Anniversary Number no. 4 Maduro Box Press. And, and this was one I had left over. I probably should have just sent this to you. But I got to be honest, it was, I mean, this is a really good cigar. Um, I love the bands on it. They have this silver and white gold kind of on it. Um, and it's got this beautiful, beautiful, they don't disclose the tobaccos, but it's got this beautiful coffee bean wrapper on it, which is, it's smooth. It's a soft box press on this thing. We don't know much about the tobaccos. We do know it's made in the DR. Uh, this is a, um, a, the only box press they make in the line of uh, cigars. It's a 6x54. Um, and we talked a little about this when Luge kind of questioned me on the cigar. He had me on the spot there, but I think I pretty much nailed what it had. Um, the one thing with the Luge line is, is, the, is the creaminess, and, and Luge hit on it. I hit on it as well. Um, it's such a smooth finish on the palate that there, he's right when he, he's, not, he's not just marketing. There's no aftertaste on this cigar, and you can go have another cigar. It had a lot of coffee notes. It had a nice oak note. Um, not a, and a little bit of cedar, but the oak note kind of, uh, it's just a nice, I want to say it's a kind of a sh sharp note, but not something that's going to, you know, linger on the tongue a bit. Um, it's a medium strength, medium bodied cigar. So it's something that, you know, you can have it as the first cigar of the day. It's not going to overpower you. I think it hit on all cylinders for a Maduro. It's not a cigar that's radically different flavor wise for a Maduro. But it's not one of these in-your-face Nicaraguan Maduros either. Um, you could give this cigar to anybody to smoke um, as well. And I, I have this as a box-worthy cigar. Uh, I re you know, it's, it goes for about twelve fifty, but it's well worth the money in this case. It was one of the, it was one of the f prize finds I've had this year. So, Will, hearing you talk about this cigar and this cigar company and interviewing the folks behind it, my expectations are really high. Which, I mean, that's, you know, say what you will about that, but my, my expectations are high. And I feel like it's going to meet my expectations. I'm very optimistic will, about this blend and this it, cigar manufacturer, too. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, I'll be, I'll be honest. You know, we get, I get, we get a lot of cigar manufacturers that yeah. us. And to be honest, sometimes I have to vet them, okay? Because they're just, there's just so many, and everyone's got the greatest cigar. This one, um, I happen to know Sean through a mutual friend, and... He, came, he got in touch with me, and again, I, I didn't know what to expect, right? Right. And so that's interesting. You went into it blind. I went into it blind. I did know him indirectly. I'd never met him before, but I was still very, very cautious. And um, I was just – and from talking to him on the phone and smoking the cigar, I said, I got to get these guys on the show. I thought it would be – I didn't know what – I had not talked to Luge before, and he's a character to say the least. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and he's got a real interesting story. So th these, I think, Paul, I'd be surprised if you didn't like it. I, I, I'm willing to kind of stick my neck out on that one. I can't wait. Um, yep. So I smoked a Rocky Patel Decade Lancero. Interesting little background about this cigar. We interviewed Rocky Patel, and I asked Rocky, you know, what were some of the more memorable cigars or favorite cigars that he had in his own line? And he said the decade, which is interesting because this was his 10-year anniversary cigar. And now he's coming out with his 20th anniversary cigar, right? Or fifth, What did he talk about on the show? Was it ten, the 20th anniversary. 20th anniversary, right? He did a 15 as well. Right? Did he have a 15th anniversary yes. as well? He did a he did yeah. the decade. Yep. And then he did the, fi the, the, the 15 the five 15, years ago. Yeah, I think I, did, I think I smoked the 15. I haven't smoked the 20 yet. Have you smoked the 20? No, it hasn't come out yet. It hasn't come out yet. So no one's, yeah. aside no from one's him and his family, yeah. right? his cousin yeah, and his they, brother. Right. They haven't talked much. There's a, there's a natural and a Maduro coming out with that, too. Okay. So this, is his, this was his first anniversary cigar. I don't know if he had a five-year or not. No, he didn't have a five-year from what I'm aware so of. So this was like a big deal for Rocky, and he kind of hinted that into the interview. Now, yeah. what was interesting was when um, Stogie Santa, when I went to the Mr. J. Savannah smoke shop, um, a long time ago, I, you know, I'm always talking with Stogie Santa about what am I going to try next? What am I going to do? What am I going to try? Always looking for different stuff. And he was like, dude, try this decade in the Lancero. And he was like, these things have some serious, you know, age on them. And he, I had bought a few of them 
And I had one left kicking around my humidor. And I'm like, oh, we just interviewed Rocky, so let me give this a try. So I lit this up. This is a really good cigar. Um, great flavors. Has some earthiness to it. A little bit of, you know, chocolate kind of notes to it still. Very, very smooth. I tell you what, age has been very kind to this cigar. By no means is this cigar aged out whatsoever. Very, very smooth profile. I would give it a solid fiver in the Lancero format. I really, really like the cigar. I think that that uh, this format works well with that blend. Uh, so, you know, the funny thing, Rocky really has in the last few years. He's a lot of the Lanceros. He's not made a lot of them. Um, he did introduce one with the Super Lajero this year, but he's really Lanceros are getting tougher and tougher to find in the Rocky yeah. Patel portfolio right now. I, can, I will, I'd love to try the Super Lajero and the Lancero. I'm gonna have to order some of those, dude. I I like that Super Lajero blend. What did I say? Super it, Lancero. I think Super I think Lajero in the blend. Lancero, it's the bell of the ball too. I, really? I think yeah, I think it's really good in that size. Because I love those Toros that he sent us. I had to I had to cut myself off because I. I couldn't smoke anymore, otherwise I'd be dipping into the prize pack. So I had Oh I know. To, there I know. is a five pack that someone won and there is five in there. I had to like restrain myself from smoking them because I I smoked all the rest of them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Back to you, Will. Um so this is the second of my box where it's easy. It's the uh, it's a TAA cigar. Um and this is the first TAA cigar by Nat Sherman called the Pan Americana. Um, and actually, the story with this cigar is pretty interesting. They, um, this was a house cigar for the Nat Sherman townhouse in New York City. And um, I guess it did well, and they somehow the TAA uh, and Nat Sherman got together, and now this has been taken on a more national basis, being offered in, in the various TAA retailers. Um, this Cervantes is a, it's really a, I'd say it's a Corona size, or, you know, I guess maybe a Lonsdale somewhere, but it's a 6x43 cigar. Uh, so it's a, nice, it's a nice longer, thinner cigar there. Um, it gets its name because it has Pan American tobaccos, uh, Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, and it's got uh, Costa Rican and Nicaraguan tobaccos and the rest of the filler. Um, I've actually been a little picky on the TA. I think the TA cigars in the last couple of years have been weak, but this one was really a good cigar. Um, the one thing, the one thing I couldn't help is when I when I when I did a dry drawer of that cigar, and I, I hate coming up with a crazy flavor profile, but the, the 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 tobacco on that dry drawer almost had a little bit of a marzipan sweetness to it. It was what is that's, what is I I, li- I I I like your crazy flavor profiles, Will. I think I try not, I try to stay away from it too. But this I, well, I think a, the thing is, if you use them in every review, it it can be over the top. But you right. definitely. You reserve those for when you actually get that flavor, and I, th- I think that's one thing that differentiates it. I don't yeah. know what marzipan is, but it's if, it, a, if it's, it's what it's you a, identify with, that's fine. It's like a candy, I guess. Is, I can't even describe it. It's, it's like one of those candies that you find behind a candy counter. So it's not, um, it's not per se, you know, it's, it's not, I, I shouldn't say that, but it's, it's, kind of like a, it's kind of like a candy almost. Like a candy part. sweetness. Yeah, it's like a candy sweetness, but it's not like a... You know, it's not like having a uh, a, a cherry a cherry sucker or a lollipop. It's not something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but once you get into it, it's much more of a traditional type of cigar. Um, not a not a. It's got the coffee notes, which I just love throughout there. Um, nice cedar. Um, there's a there's a spicy kick at the end of this cigar. So I was kind of um, I was kind of surprised at the the spice that was kicked up at the end of it. Uh, strength wise, it's not a nicotine bomb. It's medium. Body wise, it's kind of like medium to full. Um, I thought this 6x43 was like tailor made for this blend, though. I haven't smoked any of the other sizes yet, but I just uh, felt that this was a really, really good size to try. Um, and I think it's different than anything in the Nat Sherman portfolio to date. I think that's the key thing. Is this one um, is a cigar that, you know, a lot of those are more of those Casada Dominican cigars. Um, this one's not going to be that. They're actually making this in Nicaragua at the Placencia factory, so it's going to have more of a of a of a Nicaraguan spin. So it's not going to have that Dominican taste like you get on the the Joel Shermans or the Apocas or the Timelesses. Hmm. But very good cigar. Um, oh, is that a mar- get- is that a marzipan? We have that up on the stream now. Is it, which one is the marzipan? Is it the 
they're all marzipan. It looks like this a strawberry, is, though. Is that? Yeah, they could be in the. They could be like a strawberry. Like I said, they they they're kind of they're kind of these custom candies. I guess is the best way to put it. I you see. find it behind a candy counter as opposed to a. I want to uh, try some of that now. They're they're very sweet. They're soft. They're, they're like, soft and yeah. sweet. Yeah, they're soft. It's not a hard candy. It's a soft candy. Really, soft yeah, and have, sweet. Just just like me, soft and sweet. And, and uh, they make <laughs> they're fruit. They're fruity too, is I think the other way. So, but they have a. They they're very sweet. They're very sweet. Is so. Yeah, I got you. On that on that dry drawer, I got a lot of sweetness. I thought that was going to be the whole way through. The the cigar is not going to be like that once once it's lit up and and there's combustion. You're not going to get anything like that. Gotcha. Um, so it's kind of interesting. When I was at one of my trips to um, Casa Fuente in Las Vegas, uh, it's kind of hit or miss what you're going to find when you go there. You never know what they're going to have special. One year when I visited there, they had, and I've never seen these cigars anywhere else. I've never really even seen these cigars talked about that much Uh at all, Will. I mean, this is yeah. like, if I were to define like some of the unicorn Fuente cigars, uh, I think there's like, I think there's unicorns that speak Estonian style Fuente cigars, and then there's like regular unicorn Fuente cigars, and then there's like some rare stuff, and it kind of trickles down from there. This is like, this is unicorn level cigar. <laughs> For Arturo Fuente. And this is the Arturo Fuente Hemingway Signature Rosado. So at at some point, and I don't know what the production is. I don't have much background on on this cigar. We've talked about these on the show before. Fuente made the Hemingway blend and put a Rosado wrapper on it. And I think it's been met with mixed success. They put it on the 858, which is another phenomenal cigar. Um, They put it on their King T, which... It's kind of an okay cigar. And they've got other risotto wrap cigars, which are which are good. But whatever risotto wrapper they put in this signature blend, I, will, have you? I think I gave you one of these on our last anniversary show. Oh, it's fantastic! It, yes. And these so so uh, what my I'm afraid these cigars are going to age out because they're not a very strong cigar at all. Um. So I was like, oh, well, I got I got to smoke these, and I'm like, yeah, it's it's in the morning. I'm gonna I got to smoke one. And let me tell you, it's like orange cream soda. Like there is this citrus component, but it's sweet and creamy. And that's what kind of comes together to call it orange cream soda. The, the, this cigar is all about flavor. The, the, you, it is unmistakable. You cannot smoke the cigar and just not be overwhelmed with enjoyable flavors like orange cream soda w- without the carbonation, right? And it, the, it's balanced. The sweetness doesn't overpower the cigar. You know, there's a, a little bit of other kind of like uh, a touch, tiny, tiny bit of like kind of a spice um, to, to balance that out. Extremely well balanced. This cigar is oasis for me every time. It, it, these cigars are absolutely unbelievable I don't know where you find more. I don't know if you ever find more. I don't know if they'll release them, when they'll release them, or if they release them, if they're going to be the same as this one, because this one has some age on it. But this one is the, it's a true unicorn cigar and absolutely fantastic and well-deserving of an Oasis rating. It embodies everything that we talk about in an Oasis rating. That marrying of flavor, smoking experience, balance, um, sweetness, everything that you would think of in an Oasis cigar, the cigar embodies. You can't not rate the cigar in Oasis cigar. It's a great cigar. I mean, it, there, there's no argument made for me on that. I, that is just a fantastic cigar. They're they're amazing, right? I mean, and the other thing with Oasis, right, is it stands out um, against everything else that you smoke. And when you, I, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to go back to these, right? Because I've smoked how many hundred different cigars since the last time I smoked one of these. And I'm, sometimes I want to go back and say, well, is it, is it really that good? This cigar is really that good. <laughs> and and there's think- just that small half to 1% of the cigars that just really stand out. And this is one of them. We only have 49 
Oasis ratings on Stogie Geeks, and, and keep in mind that's not just me and you. That's that's Paul. I mean, right. Mark Jr., uh, Stogie Santa, Tim. <clears throat> so that you know that, that's that is a very small set, and we do yeah, really probably that. close to a thousand, at least eight or nine hundred. Yep. Uh, More than there. that. There's over th- there's over a thousand. Over a thousand, and only fifty have have garnered that Oasis rating. Yeah, so I mean, it's something we pull out a few times a year, most right now. Yep. And this cigar does it for me. I gotta find more of these. I don't know where you. Uh, I think Private Collector is probably might be the only place you'd find these. Will. I think so too. <clears throat> Back to you, Will. Um, this was another one. This was another cigar I just pulled out of um nowhere so to speak and 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 this one blew me away and i've had a couple of cigars from this company but this one in particular was the one that stood out it's a a cigar called headlines uh and they headlines is a brand that um it started out as a house brand at fusion cigars in clearwater florida um they somehow hooked up with the folks at sosa cigars and sosa cigars is distributing them taking them national now what they did is they basically, once that happened, they kind of imploded the line and reblended everything. Uh, so the Sosa folks kind of work with them to reblend it. I, I ha- this is the reblended cigar. I've not had the original. Um, this is a Dominican Puro, uh, basically a Pennsylvania seed wrapper. Um, and it was blended by the folks at, um, at Headline Cigars. Now, they make two cigars. They make, um, they make um, Headlines First edition and headline second edition. Now, I think it's the first edition is the one that stands out. They call this size page three, which is six by 50. Now, here's the thing that I thought was just blown, blew me away about this cigar. It smoked nothing like a Dominican cigar. I mean, for all Dominican Puro, this thing smoked Central American all the way through. Um, and it just had a dark chocolate note in this thing. That was just fantastic. And then again, we talked about that smooth finish on the palate. Really smooth finish on the palate. Um, it was uh, not a... The, the, the nice thing about this is that towards the end, it didn't get very spicy. I mean, it really just held that smooth flavor right until the, the nub there. Um, it, um, there was a little bit of warmness at the end of that cigar, but I think at that point it was time to put it down because I, I got such a small nub there. Um, it's a medium strength cigar, medium to full in body. Very, very reasonably priced, this cigar. Six seventy five. And that's one thing that really attracted me why I put a box worthy on it, because for a six seventy five cigar, for it to smoke that good. Now, I didn't think the other headline cigar, and I'm gonna smoke the other one again. I don't think it's it was a, it stood out as much as this one, but um, a nice cigar. If your retailer carries Sosa cigars, they probably can get this cigar. But it's one I would definitely check out. Awesome. Um, I smoked a Roberto P. Duran Premium La Punta, he calls the size. The, the, yep, that's the Torpedo. No, that's the La Punta. Is the, uh, well, I smoked the Robusto. Which size is okay. that? Is that uh, La Punta? I put probably put the wrong one in there because I thought it was. Um, keep I did, talking. I'll get that. Yeah, I did. I did smoke the Bellicosa. I, I didn't like it as much as I liked the Robusto, which I, uh, why I decided to put the the Robusto on the show. Um, this Robusto was great, dude. It was awesome. It had this medium body and a wonderful creaminess. Slight touch of you know sweetness throughout. Uh, bounced with some nice spice. Um, it, it, it's a good kind of like midday cigar. It's not going to overpower you. Uh, and I smoked a you know a couple of different ones in in this line. And this robusto really stood out as just being a like medium body, full flavor cigar. And that's you know a lot of times what we look for, of course, uh, especially something you're gonna smoke during the day. Love this cigar. This is uh, this is a box split with a friend for sure. I mean, I th- you, I think you guys are really gonna like these cigars. Rio Rio Toa. Rio Toa. Rio Toa is the yep. robusto size. Yeah, I, th- that this. Blend works very well in this size. Yeah, what, and, and what do you think yeah, of this one, Will? I I agree with you on that. Um, I think that's the size I liked. I smoked it as a pre-release and um, was very impressed with it. I think it's aged wonderfully on that. I think it's 
probably that five by fifty two is the size I'd I'd recommend on that one. Um, I love that wrapper color. First of all, it's it, it is look it's at nice. it. It's almost like a burnt orange uh, thing on that. Um, it it um. It just it was it was not as it was like a medium strength medium bodied cigar. Um, I did like what I liked about this cigar was how the flavors really complemented each other well. Um, and I got a little bit of what I term that Cuban twang. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It is it is a very I hate to use the term, but Cuban esque cigar. It is. It, it it's is. a Cuban cigar, but it's also not a cigar for. You know, I don't want to say it's a, I think if you you got to kind of like that Cuban X profile, yes. like this, and it, if you don't, it just they have other cigars in the line um, that will that will satisfy it. But that I agree. I think it's a it's a really it's a really solid cigar. And we're gonna have um, we have Jack Tarano on next week from nice. Roberto. Now uh, I think just the other thing is I um, that cigar. You know, that's kind of meant as their high end line cigar too. But it will deliver a very good. Good smoking experience on that. I and I, I do want to say too that the the burn draw in construction was awesome. It had a really nice draw to it. You know, you get some cigars you got to work out more than others. The draw on this one was effortless, but not so much so that it burned hot. And that's, I, I you know I think it's one of the reasons why this was my favorite size was that when you smoked it, you got a lot of smoke. The draw was easy, but it didn't burn hot. That's the magic combination right there yeah you know and i've smoked this in the 60 right and it the 60 again it had that openness mm. and i was worried when i smoked the 60 in that that i would have like real combustion problem and i did not have that problem yeah cool back to you will i'm done so i did uh tatawahe miami 10th anniversary because you smoked one on the show not too long ago mm-hmm well, I still think this one needs time. I still think it's a fiver in my book. I got some nice flavors up front, um, but it got a, a little bitter kind of notes for me um, that I think more age will, will will definitely fix. I think this is a great blend. To me, I, I just think it needs more time in the humidor for all those flavors to melt. I think it's going to be great, but I think it's going to take a year, another year or six months that, before I smoke that, it again. That's a surprise. I mean, you think about that. Yeah, we don't often disagree on that. Like when you smoked it and said that this cigar is is awesome, that's why I went back and lit one up because we're we're usually pretty much on the same page. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't with this one. I wasn't. This is the be- this is the Bella Ancre. The Bella Ancre. Thank yeah, you. Yes, so this is the limited they did last year. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. Uh, I mean, I can see where you're going with that. It, it's a cigar that has the aging potential. Yeah, you know, I don't. There's know. There's some you strong know. tobaccos in there, man. They've got some bold flavors in them, you know. It, it does. It <clears throat> it definitely is one of the stronger cigars Pete's released in a while. Uh, I also smoked a La Aurora Cameroon Bellicoso. I I wanted something Cameroon, and I wanted something that I really <clears throat> hadn't tried before. And this is like their uh, more value priced Cameroon cigar. And uh, comes in the Bellicoso. And this, this cigar was really good. It had that nice Cameroon sweetness. Smoked really well. I would call this one a fiver. Probably not my most favorite size in, in that line. I think I'm still trying to find my favorite size in that La Aurora Cameroon, regular Cameroon line. They, of course, make a lot of higher-end Cameroon cigars that are a lot more expensive. But they've got this regular line that I think is really good. And I think I'm going to really find my size that I really like and probably rate one a box-worthy because I think that the, they did a fantastic job with the blend. For me, the Bellicoso, it's a fiver. You probably haven't smoked a lot of these, Will. I haven't smoked that in a long time. Yeah. Uh, I'll, have to, would, I'll have to I, send I, I you would, some. I know there's not a lot of La Aurora where you are. No, it's tougher to. It's kind of tough to get. Um, so I sometimes I'm able to get the new stuff now from the folks at Miami Cigars, which is which has been helpful. Yeah. Uh, but that looks like a really really uh, nice belt. Uh, Nice Bellicoso there. I like the shape on that thing. I, um, you know, it's interesting. I'm looking at last week where I smoked the Trill <coughs> Torpedo Gordo. And I, I added the Trill. Maybe I didn't add it. Something it, happened. It, did you tag it? Because I saw it out there. You it is out it. there. I ta- I, maybe I didn't tag it right. Um, I might have made a mistake when I tagged it. So I did smoke the Trill Toro size, which you said you liked better as well. Totally see, yeah, totally see yeah, where you're going with yeah, that. Yeah, you forgot to tag it. Yeah, I forgot to tag it. it. It's there. 
Yeah. Um, hopefully there's not other cigars I forgot to tag. But I did want to talk about the Trill by Villiger specifically because I like that blend. It's kind of got that almost like a citrusy kind of sweet profile going on. Um, what did I rate that? Did I rate that a box split? That was a good cigar, box, dude. Box worthy. Box worthy. That was I a agree. really good cigar. I smoked it earlier on in the day. I thought it was a great medium bodied. Again, it had that kind of almost a citrusy component to it that worked really well in that blend. The blend worked so much better on the Toro size, Will, than, than the Torpedo Gordo. Which is interesting because if I look at them visually, I like the look of that Torpedo Gordo better. And, but the Toro just looks kind of boring next to some of those other more interesting, unique sizes. But the Toro is where it's at. Fantastic. Love that cigar. Yeah. Um, you have one more. You have one more. I do. I smoked one of the ones you sent me. This is the Naya. Is that how I say it? Naya. Naya. It's a Roberto Duran. This is another Roberto Duran. Okay. Yep. Yeah. The uh, Lajero Typhoon. Naya Lajero Ty- Typhoon. Did I get that right? Uh, they actually call it the they actually call it the F eight, but yeah, the, that's on the band says, too. Yeah, but the Hero Typhoon's also on the band. Yeah, that, I'm interested to hear about this one. Well, I, I'm assuming it uses La Hero inside of it, hence the name. Do you yep, have the blend they, information handy? Oh uh, yeah, I do. What they did with that is really interesting. That um, so the Naya okay was released last year, and. They released it in actually two blends. Um, the, it's a Habano Ecuador wrapper grown on Roberto's plantations with Nicaraguan binder and filler. Um, and actually, did you smoke the 56? I think or the so. 60? That's yeah, the so 56. That's, that's not the 60, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So the F8 is what they did with that. They have five sizes. Three of them are what they call the Nea Classic, and then they have uh, the other two are called the F8. And, and they use F8 as a... We could talk to Jack more about this next week. It's a designation that they use, I guess, to mean it's a stronger, fuller cigar that has more fermentation and, and a Lajero leaf in the filler. Mm. So there is there is Lajero in the filler there. I could definitely tell because it had um, – I, I hate to compare them, right? But for me, it kind of fell um, – I picked up some of the same flavors in this cigar that I did in that Super Lajero from Rocky Patel that I really, really liked. It had that Lajero sweetness. And I think it's – sometimes difficult to get that Lajero sweetness. I think sometimes that it can be overpowered by strength because it's such a strong leaf. And I think you have to have patience as a blender to let that ferment properly to get that sweetness. This cigar had it, dude. It had that Lajero sweetness. It persisted throughout the entire cigar. It was extremely enjoyable. It had some nice balance to it in some other flavors like spice and pepper to balance off that sweetness. I gave it a box split. I really like it. It's one of the better new cigars that I've I, that I've I've tried. Uh, um, I actually had the uh, I, I scored it when I smoked the classic. Mm-hmm. A bo- I haven't scored this one yet, but I did. I got a smoke a score the F eight because I like it too. But I had it as a box split too. Um, it's a incredible value between these cigars go from like four to seven bucks. Wow! And, and oh, it, that's it definitely is, worth it for sure. It, it's it's absolutely the hidden gem in Roberto Duran's portfolio. This one yep. I think just gets forgotten about. It's a newer release, but I think it's a hidden gem in the whole portfolio. I, and uh, the amp down, the classic, which is a little more amp down, is is like I said, it's a really really good cigar there. Um, and we gotta talk to Jack a little about this one next week. That F eight a little more. He could probably give us some more uh, insight into that. Cool. Um, what do we want to do for contest, Will? Do you have a question? Do we want to do another luge question? Yeah, we or do, do we it. want? It doesn't matter. Yeah. We can do whatever. Uh, we... It's your choice. <laughs> I hate to put my... you on the spot, but it's your choice. Okay. Um, what we'll do is um, we'll do another luge question. Okay. Because I, I want if because if folks don't remember, I want folks to go back and watch that interview. Okay. Um, so luge talked about the Morpheus anniversary cigar. Um, all I want you to do is um, name another cigar that Luge has in the portfolio. Real easy question. You will get a Saga Cigars sampler pack. Uh, comes with a cutter uh, in, in a nice little bag. And it's a, a little line sampler from Saga Cigars. You get the Golden Age and the blend number seven. If you can answer what was the question, Will, and send the correct answer to the show uh, at no, StoeyGeeks.com. Uh, uh, 
another cigar in Luge's line besides the Luge Morpheus Anniversary. So the Luge Anniversary Morpheus Anniversary is not eligible for that. Gotcha. So we gave away 15 cigars in this episode. <clears throat> it's great. Yeah. Oh, this was a fun show. Absolutely. I had fun. Yep. Uh, so we got our contest out of the way. Still we, we're on next week with Jack Taranio from Roberto P. Duran Cigars. And uh, that does it for this week. Will, as always, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for listening and watching. And we'll see everyone next week on the Stogie Geek Show.